this is uh, the hip bone to determine the side of the hip bone you must remember at least two to three points first point is that this is this fossa is the acetabulum this is the acetabulum which is going to receive the head of the femur to form hip joint next uh, this acetabulum is directed laterally <clears throat> that is away from the midline then we have the broad expanded flat ilium which forms the upper part of the bone and it lies above the acetabulum above the acetabulum and then the obturator foramen here you can see this is the obturator foramen it lies below the acetabulum and is bounded anteriorly by the thin pubis and posteriorly by the ischium regarding the anatomical position of the uh, hip bone you must uh, hold the bone like this uh, one of the simplest ways uh, to determine the anatomical uh, position and side determination of the hip bone um, it is to hold the bone in the first web space between the between the thumb and index finger and the index middle fingers will come to lie <clears throat> in the small notches below the anterior superior ilex spine and anterior inferior ilex spine so this is how you are going to hold the bone in the anatomical position uh, secondly the <clears throat> anterior superior ilex spine and the pubic symphysis this is the symphysial surface of the pubic bone and this upper part of the pubic symphysis they must come to lie in the same coronal plane so like that secondly this is the anterior part and this is the posterior part so it is going to form the sacroiliac joint posteriorly in the midline so in order to determine the side determination and to hold the bone in the anatomical position you must remember the formula of holding the bone in the first web space secondly if you hold the bone like that so that the first web space is actually holding towards the anterior inferior ilex spine this is automatically going to be the wrong position secondly you cannot hold the bone like that like that because then the stabulum is facing forwards rather it should be facing laterally like that So, um, starting with the first part of the ilium, hip bone comprises of three parts, ilium, pubis and ischium. So, this is the upper part, this entire part is the ilium. Ilium forms the upper expanded part of the hip bone. It has an upper border and a lower end that ends at the upper two-fifths of the acetabulum. It has three borders and three surfaces. The borders are anterior, posterior, and medial. The surfaces include the gluteal surface, iliac surface of the iliac fossa, and the sacropelvic surface. So let's start with the iliac crest. I'm turning the bone like that so that it is visible. The iliac crest is visible enough. So, um, Ali crest is a broad convex ridge. This, you can see that it is a broad convex ridge like upper end of the acetabul uh, of the ileum. So, the Ali crest is a broad convex ridge forming the upper end or upper border of the ileum. This is the anterior superior ilex spine and here we have the posterior superior ilex spine. The morphologically the ilex crest is divided into a more than ventral two-third segment and dorsal two-third of the segment. 
so the ventral segment is larger in length as compared to the dorsal segment short dorsal segment the ali crest the ventral segment particularly comprises of three further parts in the form of two lips and an intermediate ridge there is the inner lip then we have the posterior lip and in the middle we have a ridge the anterior border of the ilium starts at the anterior superior ilic spine runs downwards towards the acetabulum towards the acetabulum so this is the anterior border starting from the anterior superior ilic spine moving down till the acetabulum the upper part of the border as you can see below the or under the anterior superior ilic spine is forming a small notch and a similar small notch can be observed below the anterior inferior ilic spine here is the upper notch below the anterior superior ilic spine and here is the lower notch below the anterior inferior ilic spine the posterior border of the ilium extends from the posterior superior ilic spine from the posterior superior ilic spine till the posterior border of the ischium the medial border it extends on the inner pelvic surface this surface that is facing the abdomen or the cavity of the abdomen is the pelvic surface and this medial border basically is present on the inner surface or the pelvic surface of the ilium it extends above from the ilic crest separating the ilic fossa from the sacropelvic surface running down till the pubic eminence medial border extending downward till the pubic eminence and it separates the ilic fossa from the sacropelvic surface so these were the three borders we had the anterior border extending from the anterior superior ilic spine till the upper end of the acetabulum and then we have the posterior border extending from the posterior superior spine up till the posterior border of the ischium this is the ischium and then we have an inner medial border that is extending from the ilic crest above separating the ilic fossa from the sacropelvic surface running down till the pubic eminence next moving on to the surfaces of the ilium we have the gluteal surface ilic surface in the form of ilic fossa and the sacropelvic surface starting with the gluteal surface the bony features of gluteal surface is that it comprises of or it bears at least three lines since they are located on the gluteal surface so they are labeled as gluteal lines we have a posterior gluteal line an anterior gluteal line and inferior gluteal line the posterior gluteal line it begins Five centimeter in front of the posterior superior ilic spine and runs downwards to end at the upper part of the greater sciatic notch. So here we have the posterior gluteal line. This you can see is the this you can see is the posterior superior ilic spine. So posterior gluteal line is starting five centimeter from the posterior end. 
Next, uh, we have the anterior gluteal line, which is actually the longest line. Uh, this, as I mentioned earlier, is the iliac crest. Uh, this is the ventral, uh, two-thirds of the iliac crest. If you look just behind the, on the gluteal surface at the iliac crest, it shows a prominence, this prominence, which is actually about, again, 5 centimeter uh, posterior to the anterior superior iliac spine. This prominence is labeled as iliac tubercle. So the anterior uh, gluteal line, it basically begins about 4 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine. This is anterior superior iliac spine. And here you can see the line is starting, anterior gluteal line. And it runs backwards and downwards to end at the <clears throat> middle of the upper border of the greater sciatic notch. This is the greater sciatic notch. Uh, below the posterior inferior iliac spine. Then we have the inferior gluteal line, uh, which is sometimes uh, not uh, distinguished from the rest of the two lines. Uh, and it is considered to be ill-defined in comparison to the anterior gluteal line and posterior gluteal line. It begins a little above and behind the anterior inferior iliac spine. So this is anterior inferior iliac spine. So above the anterior inferior iliac spine, it begins to run backwards again downwards to end at the this is greater sciatic notch this is the apex of the greater sciatic notch so it ends at the apex of the greater sciatic notch moving on to the next surface of the ilium uh, which is in the form of ilic fossa it is a large concave area on the inner surface of the ilium uh, situated in front of the medial border separating it from the sacropelvic surface it forms a lateral wall of the false pelvis. Third surface of the uh, hip bone is called the sacropelvic surface. It is an uneven area on the inner surface of the ilium, again separated from the ilic fossa by the medial border. It is subdivided into three parts. An ilic tuberosity. Please do not confuse this iliac tuberosity with the iliac tubercle on the iliac crest, outer aspect of the iliac crest. This iliac tubercle is situated 5 cm behind the anterior superior iliac spine on the gluteal surface of iliac crest, whereas this iliac tuberosity is basically located on the sacropelvic surface inner side of the pelvis. Uh, next, uh, we have the uh, pelvic surface and then the preauricular sulcus and the auricular surface. So, we have uh, this um, ilic tuberosity, which is the upper larger roughened area. If you look closely, this is the larger upper roughened area on the uh, sacropelvic surface lying just below the dorsal segment of the iliac crest. This is the dorsal segment of the iliac crest and just below it is the auricular surface is articular and it lies antero-inferior to the iliac tuberosity. This is the auricular surface in the form of an ear antero-inferior to the Ilic tuberosity. <clears throat> it articulates with the sacrum to form the sacroilic joint. The pelvic surface is smooth and lies antero inferior to the auricular surface. Here we have the pelvic surface. It further lies antero inferior to the auricular surface. It forms a part of the lateral wall of the true pelvis. And um, along the upper border of the greater sciatic notch, this surface is marked by the preauricular sulcus. If you look closely, this is the pelvic surface. And here is the preauricular sulcus.
this one just in front of the auricular surface where my thumb is rubbing the preauricular sulcus it is this sulcus is deeper in females than in males